Um, Dave leads Consumer Insights at Flip, a retail technology company that is reinventing the way that people shop. Dave oversees the market research, UX research, and customer experience teams. Dave and his team focus on bringing an objective voice of the consumer to flip strategy and product development efforts. And then prior to flip, Dave honed his research and insight skills at small and large organizations across various industries, including but not limited to General Mills, Nielsen, Neil, and Staples Canada. So uh, Dave, take it away and there'll be a Q&A session just like the one before, right after. Awesome, sounds good. Thank you, Angela. Um, I'll say, I don't know, uh, Dave is zero on the call. That was a tough act to follow. Um, and for the student body, I guess you have to sit through some traditional slides and uh, I guess no fancy drawings uh, on the iPad, but I'll aim to make the conversation interesting. So thank you for the warm introduction. Uh, what I aim to do is uh, to provide a little bit more context as to how organizations bring uh, marketing campaigns to life and what are some of the things that go back uh, behind the scenes uh, for, for, you know, for a company or a marketing team uh, to be able to do that. And one of the things that goes into it is, you know, data insights and analytics. So that's that's the broad topic. Uh, so I'll aim to spend the next, you know, 15 to 20 minutes or so to take you through uh, kind of like the insights development process, uh, at least we utilize here at Flip. And then I'll aim to provide you with an, with an example, because part of the objective here is to help you guys connect the dots between, you know, things that you might learn in the classroom, but what are some of the things that are happening uh, in in like the four walls within like a, a, a what you consider like a traditional corporate culture or a company, um, and then I'll leave you with one key takeaway, and we'll go through uh, Q and A. So uh, a little bit about my background, uh, as Angela already said. So I actually started off my insights career uh, at Exine Nielsen. So some of you might have heard uh, they are a large global uh, conglomerate of you know analytics and measurement company. Um, I was on one of their, you know, more specialized team where I managed a, 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 a kind of a pod of clients, if you will, and these were some of my clients. So I started off my career in, in more of a C, CPG background, um, and then I switched over to the client side. I actually did a sting of four years at General Mills managing insights uh, for various brands, um, and General Mills, again, is one of those, you know, you consider traditional really big uh, CPG companies. And then... I shifted over my career and now I've been with Flip for uh, about three and a half years. So if you have time or if you have questions on, you know, differences in culture between, you know, a traditional company versus a startup or a uh, company ramp doing how CPG companies does marketing, I'm more than happy to connect offline to talk about that or even field questions uh, at the end during the Q&A session. Um, just a shameless plug on the app, though, if in case if you're not aware uh, or don't know th about the Flip app, so it is a, a what we would call it a two-sided marketplace. So we have an, a, a shopper side of the business, and then we have a merchant side of the business. So the shopper side of the business, the primary product is is the app, and our mission uh, for the app is that we want to help shopper provide for their families by making life affordable. And the primary content that we have on the app are, uh, in Canada, at least anyways, are mostly flyer and coupon app where you can find savings and deals uh, on the platform. So at Flip, I manage a team of uh, researchers uh, and CX professionals. So uh, I have uh, two small teams of qualitative and quantitative researchers where their primary um, uh, responsibility is to help the organization to kind of primary research where uh, you would leverage ways, uh, methodology like a traditional survey. Uh, online is the most common uh, toolkit uh, nowadays. And then my UX researchers on the qualitative side are embedded in the product organization, work closely with the product design and product managers to help understand you know, UX challenges, pain points on the app, uh, how to improve the app um, by soliciting user feedback uh, through primary research channels. And then my, my CX team, they look after all of the CX feedback. So if you think about uh, every time you're not particularly happy with a particular product and you send in a, a feedback about, you know, on Amazon or Netflix or something like that, it's the CX team that usually sees that. Um, and then they respond back to the request. But what happens is we then take that response back, res, uh, response and the data to the product team so that we can make the product experience uh, better and more seamless and frictionless for our users. So all in all, the mandate for the team, without having to read through every single word, um, is that we advance the understanding of you know, our stakeholders. So the customers, the market, how do we help the organization understand how people use the product? How do we help the organization understand the market? 
so that the teams are informed and empowered to make uh, data-driven decisions so that we can continue to provide value to our stakeholders. So our team works cross-functionally within the organization. We're one of the more kind of, you, I would consider true cross-functional teams where we support different verticals through, you know, marketing. Uh, in fact, my team is embedded in the marketing organization, but marketing is also considered a stakeholder, but we work with sales, we work with product engineering, product design. The idea is we take and field everybody's questions in order to, you know, make sure that everyone gets something that they can walk away to empower them to do their day-to-day -day jobs better. Uh, with the collective goal of moving the organization forward. So this is important context for the next slide. I'll, I'll spend a little bit of time on this slide and I'll talk about the high level insights development process and how, you know, something gets asked from someone in the organization and how that's, you know, essentially translate to an insight that powers a marketing campaign that you see in market. So the first step is what we call intake. So what happens is, you know, someone has a question. So this is where we get different asks and requests from various team members for an organization. So an example would be, uh, you know, in the past year, um, what will shopper behavior, buying behavior change after the pandemic? Or how will shoppers react to the looming uh, recession that's caused by COVID? So there's a lot of those types of questions that we get from the organization just as examples from the past year. And then what happens is we take all of the different requests from the organization, you know, at a continuous regular basis, and we go through a triage process. So then we, we look at all the requests and then we try to match the request to organization priority. To say, you know, these questions are meant to address uh, these strategic important questions for the organization and it's really meant to move the organization forward more so than others. Therefore, these projects will be tackled sooner versus later. After that, we go through a collection process where we determine what projects work. Once we determine what project we work on, we leverage different tools and platforms that we have to collect the data. Um, so this is, oops. So this is things like, so on the quantitative side, uh, we you know, primarily leverage surveys. We have an insights community that we manage internally. Uh, we do one-on-one -on -one user interviews uh, if it's a, uh, you know, qualitative format uh, for my UX researchers. We do diary studies to understand longitudinal uh, behavioral change. We have uh, ways to look at engagement data on the app uh, to understand uh, user behavior that they've told us by using uh, the, the product. So we go through all of that collection phase and we do an analysis. So we try to figure out what the story is and how can we leverage the data to answer the key questions and objectives that we collected during the intake phase. And then once we get all of that data is what we try to figure out what the insight is, right? So, and the way that I define insight or I think about what the true insight is, is that the insight has to be something that you didn't know before that can lead to actions you can take. If you're just repeating information that people already know or reaffirming most of the time, then that's to me not a true insight. So what you want is to get insight that can drive action or data that can drive action. So those are like the two nuggets you could uncover from say a project or a study. And usually, I mean, in a project, you can, if you can cover one or two nuggets, it's already a win. Most of the, a lot of the work we do tend to be reaffirming uh, in nature uh, as we're trying to triangulate and answer a, a set of particular uh, hypotheses. So th this is the general process that we take with every project, uh, depending on the complexity of the project, some phases might be uh, more pronounced uh, than others, uh, but this is kind of like the high level framework. So I'll walk you guys through a specific example that we launched uh, recently and it's called Spring Black Friday. And I, I would assume, or maybe some of you know this, but a lot of people don't know what that means. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll explain. So Spring Black, Fly, Spring Black Friday in North America um, has become quite a bit of a, a key sales season for home and garden retailers uh, in the US. And you guys know that, you know, Black Friday during the holiday season, um, 
has been kind of like a hot shopping uh, season, especially as it started in the U.S. Uh, in the past few years, and now it kind of you know migrated over in uh, to Canada as well. So there were basically two objectives that we wanted to address. The first one was that our sales organization wanted to leverage the insights for external BD conversations, right? So we wanted to gather data that can create and power thought leaderships that we can then go to sell our product to the home and garden retailers in order to secure additional budget um, for them to advertise on our platform. So that is the primary objective. And then the secondary objective here is for the marketing team to be able to leverage these insights to develop a holistic marketing strategy and campaign. And the idea here is to drive awareness. And this is our first attempt to kind of start to own this event uh, or first year to start to own the Spring Black Friday event in partnership with the home and garden retailers in the US and in, in Canada. Um, so, what you're going to see here are some of our tactics that made up this holistic campaign that ended up driving uh, kind of what we call like an increased awareness to uh, to this event. So just a quick word on collection. Um, so that was the intake and then on the, in the collection phase, what we've done is we partner with third party, you know, research and panel uh, companies. And we put out a survey uh, to both US and Canadian uh, shoppers that plan to complete a home improvement projects in spring. Um, so we talked to roughly 2000 representative sample uh, in both US and Canada. And we leveraged a, a vendor partner in this case called Maru Blue. So what we learned, typically with, re with re big research projects like these, you learn you know, all kinds of stuff, right? There is, hundreds if not thousands of data points that we gather and the team sift through all kinds of information and what we've done is like internally we'll produce all of these assets and different data points will get leveraged by different teams within uh, the organization um, but really what we wanted to do is how do we find that you know one two three nuggets that we can pass back to the team that becomes the seed of that marketing campaign so these were the three nuggets that we uncovered. They may seem trivial, uh, but they turn into these like powerful seeds, like I said, or nuggets that led to the development of the tagline and the key themes that you would see on the next slide. So the first one is, I did, and this number is pretty pronounced, especially now we're in pandemic and like you guys probably know, like people are looking for things to do, like they want to keep busy. But what we learned was like 75% of the North American households were, were planning on some kind of home improvement projects in the spring, right? They're spending the money, there's intent, there's that willingness. And, but only less than 15% of those people have heard spring Black Friday as a quote unquote official term, as a key holiday season. Um, so then, but because of that, you know, 85% are intrigued and will be on the lookout for a spring Black Friday deals. So this poses an opportunity for us to partner with home and garden retailers to say, this is an event we can potentially own, like how Amazon owns Prime Day now, you know, in partnership with the Home Depot and Lowe's and, and Rona, we can, we can, you know, create this event and this is something that we can go through um, every year. So these were the taglines that we created. Um, it's called Spring Black Friday, the shopping event that you've never heard of. So that's kind of the key tagline that you will see on all of the creatives uh, that we uh, we put out into the market. And the key theme really is about, you know, spring renovation season has arrived and it's come to some of the best home improvement product deals from our merchants. So a lot of this is a partnership of leveraging, you know, our merchants brand name and the strength of the flip brand in Canada to bring a lot of these to life. So, so this is where you hear this term a lot, probably like the 360 marketing campaign, but in this case this is a true 360 uh, marketing campaign. So I'll show you examples uh, for all of these, but re revolved around that theme, we have you know, in-app tactics, we partner with influencers, we produce infographic to go into the press releases on our websites and blog posts. We have social and email. We started a giveaway uh, competition or a campaign where we get people interested and you know participate in these events. 
Um, and, and last but not least, we have direct response ads, and this is what, like the Facebook and Google and Amazon ads that we put on the market, try to you know, drive downloads um, and, uh, and content consumption on our platform. And in addition to you know this high level, we also produce typically some kind of what we call go-to-market planning. So we we list all of these tactics and we try to figure out all right, this is the time when we do we will need to do you know plan for these tactics and this is the go live date for these tactics. So you know within marketing, there's there's typically a lot of project management uh, that's that's involved that you need to you know stay very organized and try to figure out um, you know the right sequence of events and when things are happening. But this is at high level. Happy to address any questions on that uh, in in detail during the Q and A. So I'll I'll show you guys a few creatives. So this is I hope the sound will come through. Uh, this is the direct response as uh, that we made that we put out on on Facebook. the tagline to stay on theme and you will see similar uh, color palettes across all of these creative uh, creative assets um, and they all try to drive to the same uh, to the same message either drive download to the app or drive a track to a merchant site so this is the two examples that we have on the direct response as uh, in app so uh, on in the actual product in on the flip app we have different uh, properties or assets that will drive to different um, uh, destinations so uh, for example like this one drives to our blog site where we have like a card here that says you know save more with these spring black Friday flip tips and we have a blog site that's that's um, that is called flip tips where we outline a lot of, you know, savings uh, and financial management types of tips and tricks to help, you know, people who uh, need and want to save money uh, with, with that particular goal. Um, and then some of these will drive to uh, merchant properties. Um, and so the, in partnership with uh, my team, a lot of these data are from uh, from the research where we produce infographic and these infographic went on to our blog site but as you will see later it also went to uh, as part of the press release uh, that we partner with different media outlets social and email um, again a lot of these are of the same theme or same tagline um, and the same same color palette uh, that you saw throughout all of the creatives and we try to work with uh, influencers as well, especially in the, in the local markets. So for example, like Texas is a big uh, flip user base uh, for us in the US. So we try to find a lot of local influence to help drive that grassroots uh, word of mouth and organic um, uh, acquisition channel, if you will, uh, to, uh, to drive them to, to our property. So we have a lot of that going on. Uh, we implemented a giveaway where uh, that we try to stay on theme uh, to you know incentivize people to come into the platform uh, to download it and then drive traffic to to merchant properties. Um, this is just an example of the blog and some of the engagement uh, that we saw uh, from a comments uh, perspective. And then last but not least, uh, press release. So we partner with you know different news outlet, uh, try to get a word out, and the PR and communication and the marketing team typically writes out these uh, you know press releases that coincides with uh, with the marketing tactic, and it goes out, um, and you see like a version of that infographic that's included on here. Um, and usually we share these. A lot of these are also geared towards from a B two B perspective, uh, so we we also try to share this on um, uh, LinkedIn as a, a primary channel as well. So with that, I know I kind of flew through all of that super quickly. Happy to chat more about any of those things, uh, but I do want to leave you with one key takeaway, and that for me, who leads uh, the consumer insights team in the organization, that um, I want to emphasize that everything starts with the customer. So regardless if you work for a B two B uh, company or a B two C company, that 
the most important thing is you want to generate value for your customer. And it is important for you to understand what they're where there might have gaps and what their pain points are so that you can design a solution for those pain points. So if you think about like the most sticky products in the market uh, or marketing campaigns that you might've seen in, um, you know, at various places, usually because they, they are effective in help solving a pain point that a user experiences, um, or they are very effective at getting that message across through that marketing campaign. So, that is like the one overarching key takeaway and it's coming from me. Um, but with that, Angela, that is all. Stay on time. Awesome. Um, so with that, we're just gonna move straight into the questions. Uh, we've got a couple great ones queued up. And so starting off, uh, building on something that I've never heard of, which is spring Black Friday. What other new and innovative marketing campaigns are you noticing in the retail space? Oh, in the, in the retail space? Yeah, so it, a lot of this is um, in a way in response to combat Amazon. So we're seeing a lot of, for example, um, uh, last year during COVID, a lot of the electronic merchants will try to you know, come together and, and, and organize the event. The name is escaping me. I'm more than happy to follow up. Uh, but there were a, a band of merchants that had tried to organize the event to specifically combat Prime Day. Um, because, you know, the likes of Amazon and Best Buy, they're losing a lot of their shoppers to Amazon. And especially last year, when a lot of the shopper behavior shifted over to online and e-commerce. So last year specifically was the year that we saw a lot of these uh, new initiatives, if you will. Uh, and a lot of the merchants try to find a niche and carve out a space for themselves. Um, it'll, it'll come to me. I, I gotta look up what the name was, uh, but there was there was one, another really good example of that. Awesome. I look forward to hearing about that further. Uh, I'm gonna use my moderator privilege and ask a question um, just from me. So, uh, how did you or how did starting off working at a marketing analytics company like Nielsen shape the rest of your career afterwards? Yeah, that's a good question. So. I would say what you learn a lot from um, like a company like Nielsen um, and Ipsos, and this really depends on what your career objective is. At least personally for me, it provided me with all the structure and the foundational analytical skills. These bigger companies tend to have a, usually a lot of uh, process or framework in place where you can learn a lot of stuff systematically and you get to expose to a lot of knowledge and a variety and a breadth of projects uh, in, a, in a very systematic manner. Um, there's downsides to that too, which I mean, I'm more than happy to share and talk about, but I think that is the one key kind of benefit that I took away uh, from working at Nielsen where like I, I had to manage, you know, a number of clients, um, but there is uh, already a, a playbook, if you will, that allowed me to do that uh, fairly efficiently. And I started honing my research skills and analytic skills uh, through a lot of very systematic training. And I think that's the other thing. W bigger organizations tend to have a lot of resources for learning and development. So um, it, in addition to you know, learning on the job, they typically have a lot of programs in place where they help you do, you know, if you want to take a course on data science, uh, usually there is a learning and development budget that's dedicated to either your team or your department where you can take advantage of that. Uh, so there's a lot of benefits like that for working um, not only for Nielsen as an analytics company, but for, for organization of that size that you can, you can reap the benefits of. I hope that helps. Yeah, definitely. So kind of building along that, um, talking about consumer insight and research, uh, what kind of research tools and softwares are currently being used within the insight space? Yeah, so there's, there, there's a breadth of them. Uh, usually it depends on objective. So, um, so I'll, I'll talk about two broader buckets. Uh, the easiest tool is, so you think about like from a one-to-many perspective, uh, the online survey is the most efficient tool uh, where you're looking to achieve statistical confidence really quickly. Um, it, that is by far the easiest way to reach, you know, thousands and hundreds of thousands of people uh, in one fell swoop. There's limitations to that, uh, of course, but it can quickly gather data super quickly and build confidence. Um, if you're thinking from a one-to-one -one perspective, 
uh, usually the toolkit that we use is, you know, these qualitative methods that are like one-on-one -on -one user interviews or diary studies where we have one or two researchers who are in these like an hour long interview sessions with a very different objective, which is building empathy. So what I call the way that I think about uh, quantitative data and this, when I say quantitative, it's quantitative research, but also includes app data. So uh, if your interest is in to you know, explore data science or analytics uh, in an organization, uh, you get exposed to millions of data points where you get you know, engagement data uh, from, from these app behaviors. What I call is uh, it makes you um, head smart, meaning it gives you the what, like gives you the how many, but it doesn't give you the why and the how. So you have to infer the why and how through qualitative research. So qualitative research is what I call, it makes you heart smart. And you need both. You need both in order to triangulate um, a more complete picture for a complete understanding of the shopper or customer or whoever that you're serving. So that's, that's the high level answer. Thank you so much. Uh, so moving on to the next question. Um, what have you learned about uh, consumer pet, like purchasing trends since the pandemic, other than uh, what you already mentioned regarding uh, like everyone shifting to Amazon? Um, so let me just get, so like in addition to what we learned in terms of, yeah. So I, I think what we're seeing is, so the obvious one everyone already knows, you know, there's, there's a big shift to uh, online and uh, click and collect and all that curbside pickup and all that stuff. Um, what we're also seeing is a, a consolidation where I think this is for a consolidation of trips. So uh, people are forced uh, because of COVID, whether it's out of fear of, you know, not having to visit multiple stores uh, or that, you know, you might have other responsibilities at home. You just don't have the time to go to multiple stores. Um, we're seeing a lot of trip consolidation. So before you might be going to, you know, three or four stores, try to price compare, uh, get deals from various stores, you now might be going to one or two. Uh, so there's a lot of supplements going on. So like you have the main store and then people are going to like one other store, try to find other things that they perhaps didn't get from the first store. And this is where the, the online uh, comes into play. Um, as w a lot, where like they're using online as the way to uh, to supplement a lot of that like one-off purchases. Thank you. Uh, as we're coming up to the end of our session, uh, I'll just wrap up by asking a few questions that are geared towards uh, hiring, uh, potentially from students who are seeking right now. So, um, it, would you say that insights is a particularly data-heavy uh, field and? If so, what kind of skill sets do you look for when you're hiring for your team specifically? Yeah, and I, I hear what I'll say is, uh, I'll echo what, they, what Dave uh, Basu said is, hard skills can be taught. So a functional skill can be taught and can be learned. And what I typically look for, and this is true for everyone on my team, I'm looking for that soft skill, that you have to be curious, you have to be creative, you have to bring um, uh, analytical power and the ability to critical think and work through the problems yourselves. I can teach you how to do a survey, how to do user interviews, because a lot of this is, is an art, right? It's learned through experience. And for a new grad, I can't expect you to have five years of user interview experience. That for me, that's just unrealistic. Uh, but you have to be able to demonstrate the ability and the aptitude to learn uh, and to get there. And that's what I look for. And there's a lot of table stakes. I've gotten asked this question too, uh, around, you know, how important is Excel or organizational skills or communication? A lot of those I would consider table stakes that in order to operate effectively in any organization that you have to bring those skills to the table. They are, uh, they're the baseline, uh, if you will. But I'm looking for that, you know, creative thinker, someone can take initiative uh, to solve the problems themselves. I will say that that's especially true in startup environment, uh, just to echo the previous speaker. Um, whereas if you work for a Nielsen, it's different, right? There's, there are 15, 100,000 people organizations where there's like 20 people doing the same thing, lots of framework, lots of handholding. In startup environment, there isn't that. Flip, even Flip is a little bit on the mature side of the spectrum now from a startup perspective. But even at Flip, we're a 400 people organization where everyone wears more multiple hats. So there's a lot of ask for you to take on additional things or work on multiple projects where there's a lot of ambiguity. And 
for a new you have to be able to bring that level of curiosity to be able to want to solve that problem proactively versus someone telling you to do that. Definitely. Thank you so much for that. Um, like I said before, there's a lot of people who are new grads and currently speaking watching this, so I'm sure that's incredibly helpful to them.